Hey y'all, welcome to the Team LocoFit Roundtable, hosted by me, Lauren Conlon, owner of Team LocoFit. Each week, I'm joined by one of our coaches to dive headfirst into the nutrition, training, mindset, and coaching strategies we use with our clients. If you loved the show, please subscribe, leave us a review, tell a friend, you know the drill. And for more information about coaching, the programs we offer, and additional content, visit teamlocofit.com. All right, and we are back this week. I am joined with Coach Sam. Hello. And we just tried to do a really cool background on Zoom, but it would not let us because <laughs> Sam's computer would not let us do this. I don't know if everybody's ever seen them. They're like called immersive screens. I don't know. I was, it was, it was new to me, but we were like in a kitchen. We were at a cafe, but Sam was not. It was just me. I was not. I was, I was there, but I was in my office in the kitchen. <laughs> So it was still in her office in the kitchen. So no cool backgrounds for us. But um, today's podcast is actually going to be on leadership. And this is a topic that I've been discussing quite a bit recently. Um, and people have been asking me about a lot. Um, but this is actually a question that was sent in. I thought it was a really relevant question because not only will this be helpful for the person who's asking, um, but I think a lot of people can either find themselves in a situation like this um, and we can, you know, hopefully provide some good tips for anybody who's in a leadership position, which hint, hint, it's everybody. So it doesn't matter what position you have in your job, in your career, everybody has a leadership role within their life um, for themselves, first and foremost, but then also for everybody around them. So I will read the question. I've never envisioned myself or dreamed of being a business owner, but now I find myself in a position to become one. The current owner of the company I work for is retiring and looking to sell. I am seriously considering this opportunity because of my care and concern about the company and its employees. I care about the clients and the direction the company is headed in. However, I am concerned about taking on this role because I'm a very non-confrontational per person and I am not a perfect employee. I worry this will cause me to struggle as a leader. I feel like there are a lot of leadership styles out there, many of them heavy handed and executed poorly. I'd really love to hear Lauren, Lauren's advice on cultivating your own authentic leadership voice amidst a sea of bad advice from bad bosses. I hope this will help me gain some perspective on making this decision myself. It is not an urgent decision, but I would otherwise very likely have to move and ultimately make some significant changes in my life. So while I don't think everybody will find themselves in this exact position, I think that a lot of people listening can find themselves kind of at a crossroads um, as a leader, right? You might, you might be moving either laterally or up or changing positions. Um, so there might be just a lot of things in your life. And just in general, the one main thing we're going to touch on too was developing your own style as a leader and having your own voice, because um, a lot of people are definitely going to struggle, not only with confrontation, but just decisiveness and leadership in general. Um, so first, I would say for this specific situation, uh, you need to be realistic about what changes need to happen now, between now and then. So let's say you decide, I'm going to buy this um, in when? Is it going to be in a month? Is it going to be six months? Does that mean that you need to already have moved before then? Like all of the logistical things that need to go into this, um, how much is this going to cost? How much is this going to um, you know, cost not only possibly purchasing the company, but moving and selling a house, buying a house, renting, do you have a family? Like there's a lot of different changes here. Um, so being really, really realistic with what needs to happen between now and then and setting a timeline for yourself. Because I think this is something that of course, you, said, you know, it doesn't have to have, it's not urgent, um, but it is something that needs to happen at some point. So if it is something that needs to happen within the next six months, well, you need to start that process sooner rather than later because Buying and selling a house, of course, and moving are going to take a lot of energy and a lot of time. Um, so the more time that you have is going to be absolutely essential. So just, I would say, be realistic about what this actually looks like and how this will change your life. Um, you know, not just on the business side, but everything else. You know, what is this going to look like? And these, you can't answer all these questions perfectly, but if it's you know, the difference of living in a different place, you know, again, if you have a family or significant other, you know, what is that going to look like for them? Um, you know, family, friends, like location, just so many different things. What is this going to entail? Um, are you going to travel a lot now? Are you not going to travel? Like, be really realistic with what will happen. Okay, I've, you bought this business. What do you need to do now? So I always just want people to understand when they are going through these things, you have to work through the logistics. It's not just like a let me do this, like work through all of them to like a nauseating degree to then see on paper 
what does this look like? And even if you put all that on paper, it's probably still going to be a little bit different than expected. Like, let's be honest, because that's just kind of life. Um, but at least you have an idea and you're not going into it and then scrambling to try to figure that out. So that would be the first thing that I would say. Um, number one, be realistic between now and buying this, what actually needs to happen and what will change immediately in your life. Yeah. Um, and I would add to that when you do buy, like when you're, you're thinking about buying, being realistic about what buying is actually going to look like before you even own the business. What are you going to need to do? Are you going to need to have legal help? Are you going to need a loan? Are you going to need some kind of insurance? Are you going to um, have to um, like go through some legal um, processes about like employment? Are they going to want to keep on all the employees? Are you going to have the free, the freedom to hire and fire? Like all those things you're, you can't, you're not just going to walk in and be like, here's a check thank you, sir, and walk away with the business. Like there's going to be a lot that goes on um, behind the scenes with that. Um, and it might not look like what you expect. Maybe you, you think it's going to be that simple or that they want to just sell it and be done with it. They might want to sell it, but still have a voice in how the business is run. And that's maybe something that you're not willing to, to do. Or maybe that's something great. You're like, oh, awesome. I'd love to have you on like a board or, or beside me in this. Um, but it's, it, it's not going to be as simple as just buying it. So being clear about what's going to go into actually the purchase and the transfer of the business um, might help you make a big decision there right off the bat. 100%. So being, again, so realistic and again, having a conversation with this, uh, the current owner, you know, like Sam said, what is your role? Are you, you, I know you want to retire, but are you like completely done? Do you want to still have a position here? Um, what is everybody like? What is this going to look like? And and none of this might go as planned, right? So there is always that caveat. You can plan, 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 but things don't always go that smoothly. But it, you still need to know going into it at least, like you said, are are we changing employees? What is legally needed to be happening? How is this money transfer happening? So so many things. That's number one. Number two. Um, educating yourself on what the role entails and what is the day-to-day -day going to look like um, that is different from what you're doing now to being the owner or the CEO. Um, and this is important for no matter, this is for any conversation, not just this conversation in particular, but this goes for any time that you are trying to change your role or you possibly have the opportunity to change your role. And I know, Sam, you wanted to touch on this, and this is just really important for everybody listening when you're saying, okay, if I'm moving up laterally, down like you know everybody can move differently within their job for certain reasons um so educating yourself on that role yeah yeah so what what do you do on the day-to-day -day? what is your um how is your relationship going to change to do to your employees than it is now because right now you're co-workers and that can be a really tricky situation going from being a co-worker to being a boss um, and so being clear on what your role is in relation to those people can help you then give that information to the employees because they might not, I mean, when you go into a job, you're not like, oh, what's my relationship to my boss? Like, if you don't already have a relationship with them, you just know like, oh, they're my boss. Like that is what it is. But when it's your friend who then becomes your boss or your coworker who then becomes your boss, that line can be a little bit blurry. So being clear as to what your roles are and what their roles are, and then having some kind of plan to disseminate that, whether that's like a one-on-one -on -one or um, like just, a, you know, a casual meeting with, the employees to say like, hey, I know things are changing. This is what I'm going to be doing now. Um, you know, your role is not changing, but this is what I have to do. And this is how I see that playing out. Um, it can kind of uh, prevent some of that confrontation because those expectations have been laid out and you can come back to that and be like, if something comes up, like, hey, we talked about this. Mm -hmm. This isn't, it shouldn't be a surprise. I'm sorry that it is. Um, but you've at least had that conversation. You can feel good about that. Um, and with that change in going from being an employee to a leader, I think something interesting that she said was, I'm not a perfect employee. That makes you a great leader because you know what it's like to be the employee. You know what it's like to mess up. You know what it's like to struggle in that position so that when your employees struggle, as they will, you can say like, hey, I know I've been there. And that was a huge thing for me as a head coach is that like when my coaches would struggle right off the bat, it was like, hey, I remember my first couple of classes. I remember my first few months. Like, it's okay. Like you're going to mess up, but this is how we can make it better. Um, and so there, you're never going to have an imperfect employee. You're never going to be a perfect employee. And so that's really, I think what would make her a great for him. I don't know what this is, but um, a great person for that role, but knowing what the role entails, knowing how you're past and how your, your 
your experience as an employee can translate is also really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so important. And, and for everybody who maybe doesn't remember or hadn't listened before, Sam used to be a head coach at Orange Theory. Um, so that's what you were talking about when you were yeah, uh, yeah. coaching with people. So, you know, you were in a very dynamic role with people who were, you know, you you were started out at a certain position and then you moved up to head coach. So you had been through all the different levels. So you were able to relate to, you know, those new people potentially. And that will make you, for the person who's asking this question, that will make you a better um leader. And that is how anybody who is in a leadership position, nobody just started there. Nobody just got planted there. It happened because of years of like work and experience and trial and lots and lots of errors. Um, and that is just how that works. Um, and yeah, like go through the day-to-days, not just, okay, so the first part was figure out realistically what do you need to do between now and then, but also, okay, now let's say you did get to that role. Let's say you are the owner, the CEO. What does that look like on an operational basis? And those might be questions that you have to ask the current owner because you might have an idea of what that looks like, but oftentimes we don't really know what that looks like until we, we talk to them because there's so many things that go on behind the scenes that just seem to like happen. <laughs> but oftentimes it is the owner or the CEO or the president, whoever is really handling all of those things. Um, so ask them, okay, on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, like, what are you doing? Please lay this out for me. Um, because again, this might be totally different. Maybe the CEO is doing all of the travel. Maybe they're doing none of it, right? Maybe you were traveling and now you won't be. And that could be something that could be intriguing or that could be a total like no for you, right? Um, or, you know, vice versa. What kind of meetings do you need to be a part of? Is this a public company? Is this a private company? Again, very different types of questions that you need to be asking, um, you know, how involved are you here? Where is the team here? Like, what are they doing? So lots of questions that need to be asked. Um, like this question is prompting like a thousand questions. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm sure people probably get so frustrated because we never seem to answer things super directly. But, and this even happens with clients. I'm sure you're the same way. Like we ask a set of questions every week and then oftentimes find myself giving responses, but then I'm asking more questions. And um, not always, you know what I mean? But there's, there's meant, because we try to make sure that the update is very, you know, encompassing of the week. But there is just times where it's like, if somebody is, is, is giving a comment and they're saying, you know, I'm struggling with this. Okay, well, what is it? Because there's five or 10 things that this could be influenced by. So I need to hear it from you. Why is this being affected this week, right? Oh, I'm really stressed out at work. Somebody saying that means very little to me because there could be 10 reasons why you're stressed out or more, right? So, okay, why, why were you stressed out? What was the what was causing this stress and how can we course correct it? Because is it that you're working at home and your family um, is now home for the summer too? So like shit's just really hectic or were you stressed at work because you had a deadline and three projects that were put on you? Very different stressors. And one of the things we can actually help control, right? Like environment. Yeah. I can't control that you got, you know, piled on with three, you know, new projects, but we can certainly control the other things. So as always, there's more questions that this is prompting, but those are kind of like the general things that I think will be really important for this person. Hopefully you're listening um, and hopefully this is useful for you. Um, but to go to the other part, which I think everybody will be able to take away from, developing an authentic leadership voice. And this was one of the main questions and I wanted to touch on a few things. First, um, as far as leadership goes, I cannot think of a better company than Echelon Front. I have learned so much from them. They are a leadership consultant consultancy um so a consulting agency consultancy uh but basically they're run by a group of amazing leaders and they put out very direct leadership information um, i've learned a lot from them and all of the content that they put out so would definitely check out their information first and foremost so that you can learn a little bit more um but then i would say the one part that um, she specifically brought up was that she's not confrontational and so there's a, there's a few reasons why people are not confrontational, right? Some people do not like to argue, right? Some people do not, um, they don't like being, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? I'm, oh my gosh, I'm losing it right now. Um, agreeable. Some people are very agreeable, right? Typically people who are confrontational are disagreeable people. Ryan is very <laughs> disagreeable. <laughs> my um, husband as well. <laughs> yeah. um, so there are certain people who are very disagreeable um and they see no problem with conf like them confronting people is not an aggressive thing that's just they want to figure it out right away there's no issue they're just like oh there's a problem we're confronting it right now 
and people who are very agreeable or non-confrontational are like, oh, um, okay, it's fine. Like, I don't even want to deal with it, right? So part of that is you might be very agreeable, um, but part of it is you might not be decisive. You might be somebody who's just very not decisive. You would rather have other people make decisions for you, or you just don't want to be the person who makes the decision because now you're the person who's overthinking. Well, make this decision. Will this affect this person or hurt this or make it like, right? You could, so there's a lot of reasons why you're not a confrontational. Figuring out what that reason is, is really, really important. Um, so I think that that's number one. That's another, that's another question. Why are you non-confrontational, right? And once you figure out why, then you can actually address it a lot easier instead of just saying, oh, I'm non-confrontational. I don't want to be a leader. Yeah. Reframing like what confrontation is to you. Like having a, having a conversation with an employee doesn't need to be confrontational and it doesn't need to, confrontation doesn't need to be, it's not even sounding like a word to me actually now that we're saying it so much, but it's not like it doesn't need to be a bad thing um a lot of times it needs to be done so that you can get to the other side of the problem and when we don't confront the issue and this goes for literally everything too when we don't confront the issue it brews and it gets worse and it can just make snowballs and uh, that's i feel like way worse than having an uncomfortable 10 minute conversation and potentially getting to the other side of it rather than sitting through something for three months of being like why won't they fix this thing? Well, because you haven't, you haven't brought it up. Like, so just like recognizing that like everything in life is discomfort at some point in time and you're going to have issues and you're going to have confrontation with, with be that clients, buyers, employees, uh, you know, anything, but it's, if you can get comfortable with that discomfort for just a short amount of time, hopefully you can get to the other side of it. Um, but accepting that it's going to happen at some point in time is also going to be powerful in overcoming it. Yeah, I think what you said was perfect. Confrontation isn't negative. Um, we can perceive it as negative if we, again, are somebody who is very agreeable or doesn't like when people are very direct. Um, but that doesn't mean that they are being rude or mean or negative right like it just means that, that that's just their communication style um so one thing to outside of just developing decisiveness we actually did a whole podcast on that so if that is where you were struggling i would definitely recommend checking it out um i think it is literally titled like developing decisiveness so easy to find um, but also learning how to be very clear and direct with your message so if you want to avoid confrontation or just any type of back and forth that and miscommunication in general the best way to do that is to be clear and oftentimes this is something that I have struggled with, you know, in the past um, was like, oh, okay, I want this to be done. Like, especially when you have a team of people, um, nobody is a mind reader. Nobody will understand when or how you want it done unless you tell them. So, hey, could you, um, you know, write this article this week? Okay. And then I'm sitting here, well, why isn't it done? Why don't we have it? Why is it not here? Hey, could you write a article and have it to me by Friday? I think this would be a really good topic. And could it be like around a thousand words? Okay. Same message, <laughs> totally different way of delivering it. Um, and nobody is going to be able to read your mind. And some people, if you just, if I were to just say, Hey, Sam, could you write an article? You could say, okay. And then do whatever you want with it. Maybe turn it in. Maybe not. Cause there's not really any direction. Or you could say, Hey, how long should it be? When do you want me to have it? What type, like, what should it be about? Um, but if you don't have an employee who's going to do that, and oftentimes people aren't because maybe they're not confrontational either, or maybe they're just like, I don't give a shit about this thing. Okay, sure, I'll give it on. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. it's it's not really over their head because there is no deadline, there is no specifics. So you have to learn how to be, and it's a really simple example, but that's something that comes up all the time that can cause a lot of like headbutting. And they're like, right? Like it's so simple, but if you just tell people, yeah, we need this done. Oh, there's this really big project we need done or I need this turned in. Um, oh, okay. When, why, how, what's it about? Like there needs to be specifics. And it doesn't mean that you have to like impose everything perfectly, but it's like, here's the general gist of it. This is when I need it done. How about it? Or if it's something where it's like, oh, I need edits. Okay, um, get me the, the, you know, the basics of it by this state, and then we'll edit it. And then this is when it needs to be finally done or whatever. So it's going to look different for every industry. I don't even know what industry this is. Um, but if you have employees, or you're, you're basically, if you're working with anybody besides yourself, you have to be clear with what you want and when you want it um, and have people understand that as well. Because then how you said, Sam, if somebody doesn't do something, right, this is especially important for like the leader to the coworker situation, especially because you, this, you might have likely been friends with these people. Um, 
then it's it's there's no misunderstanding because you already set that expectation. So then it's really easy to say, hey, um, this is the expectation that I set. Why wasn't it hit? Still uncomfortable, <laughs> but at least it was already there. Yeah. And you can't control like I mean, you can control the employees that you have, but you can't control the way someone's going to perceive that. But that the fact that you've laid out the, the clear expectations, you've been direct when those expectations are not met, it's a lot easier to know who is like performing and who's not, because if you're not setting guidelines, then it's really easy to be like, oh, I mean, I guess they, they're doing okay. They're fine. Whatever. But if it's like, these were the tasks, they didn't do it. They're not performing. These are the tasks. They did it. They're like performing. And, uh, but you can't have that metric if you're not setting the metric. And that's the hard thing about being in a leadership position sometimes is you do have to set the metric. You do have to be the one to say like, is this good enough or is it not? Um, and that is, that can get people upset with you because it's like, who are you to say? And it's like, well, it's my job. But again, when you set that expectation that my job is to like, that was the thing at Orange here I had to do with, I had to do evaluations. Very uncomfortable to evaluate someone who you, you know, also is your friend, but this is my job. And, you know, this is my job and this is what I have to do. Once that's, that said, even if they get upset, you can at least feel okay about it being like, I know that this is what I had to do. Mm -hmm. And the other thing too, is you have to bring it back as the leader to what this business is for. You're not saying I'm doing this evaluation because I want to make myself look better or I want to make whatever happen, right? Or I'm yeah. out to get you some firing, you know, why, why, yeah. why are you doing the evaluations? The evaluations are being done so that our um, facility can improve, that everything about this facility can improve. So if you're, you know, holding people to a certain standard, it's not just for you. It's not just about your bottom dollar or like your reputation or whatever. It's about the entire company. And if the company is moving forward, we're all moving forward. <laughs> That's how it works. That's how businesses work. If you don't hold employees accountable, the business will not thrive. And then nobody here will have a, have a job. <laughs> so yeah. it's always important to kind of bring it back to that why. It's not just about the leader as the individual. It's about everybody else improving. Um, and the other thing too here is creating a great team to support your weaknesses is really important. So um, again, this is going to be different. I don't know how big this company is, but if it's a really small company, you know, obviously it's going to be different, but if it is a company that's sizable, which I think it probably is from the sound of it, um, you're going to have the ability and there might already be a team in place, right? You are going to have the ability to have multiple people um, that are going to be able to help you in, in your company who do you know, okay, what is my weak, maybe your weakness is um, like finances. Okay, well, I need a really strong, you know, financial person in my corner. Um, or maybe like, I'm just not creative. I need a really good creative team in our corner. Um, and then whatever weakness, I mean, whatever strength that you have, like you can elevate that. And then wherever there is this discrepancy, that's where you can insert people to bring that up. Um, so I think it's really important too, not to think that at, so it's always about this like balance, right? <laughs> like, everything is about you because you're the leader, but also you can't do everything on your own. So you have to recognize that yes, everything is on you. Like you, if you are in charge, everything, no matter if you are involved or not is on you, but also you can't micromanage and do everything on your own either. You have to build out a team. Um, otherwise you're never gonna thrive where you're just gonna have a really tiny business that's never gonna be able to do anything. Yeah, that's how I always interpret interpreted um, extreme ownership as, that my role as a leader isn't to own everything, but uh, my job is that when someone is struggling or when something needs to get done, I need to best set that person up for success. And if my employee is struggling, if someone's struggling, where have I not helped them succeed at their job? Their job is not my job, but my job is to set them up for success in their job. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, no, for sure. And that's what, they, you know, in one of the, in that book, they talk about um, decentralized command, which is, you know, military terms. Anybody familiar with military understands what decentralized command is. Um, but basically, you know, you are the leader, but then everybody else has to go out and do things, right? So if you have a large company, you know, you have, okay, you have like a financial person, you have a creative team, you have, um, you know, the other, you know, the main workers, you have people who are trapped, like you have all these different things. You can't be going and doing all those things but you still have to be the person who is in charge, who's making sure that all of those people are supported and all those people have a clear mission and understanding of what they're doing. Um, and other, if you're trying to be the person who controls all the things that are like 
all the way out here. Um, if you study any type of you know history or you know military history in particular, when people have deployed decentralized command and then they have actually taken it back, <laughs> um, and they're trying to control everything, even though they were not even a part of it. That's when things go really poorly for those leaders, which in some case in history, that can actually be useful, um, but because they were maybe not so great. But in general, if you study that, it's it's pretty clear. So um, especially the bigger your team is, if you have a company that has 100 employees, you can't expect to do all 100 employees jobs. You have to give them the support and the tools so that they know exactly what they need to go do, but then they can go do it. And they're in the field and they you have to be listening to those people because they're who actually are dealing with the customers the clients one-on-one -on -one. um obviously like in somewhere like our business it's a little bit it's a little bit different right um but still in that case like i'm not micromanaging all of your clients like that would that would be a completely ineffective business model um nor would that be like as 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 the leader of the team that would not be good for you either like i would never want to do that to you or any of the other coaches, right? Um, but there's still support. There's still like, we all understand what we're trying to move forward. We all understand like, not just like, oh, here are your clients. Hi, Sam. But I'm also not like, hey, Sam, tell me everything about your clients. How are you doing this? Oh, I would totally change this. I wouldn't do that. I would, both are ineffective, right? So you have to have support. So you have to be close, but you can't be, you know, too close. And then lastly, I would say with leadership in general, I mean, there's so many things we could touch on with leadership, but really to kind of round this out, Leadership is about communication and building relationships, 100%. And I know that the word leadership sounds very, like, like a harsh word, right? And like things that were like decentralized command and like extreme ownership, like it sounds like very harsh, right? Um, and I think it's actually why a lot of just women in general are like, I don't need to like learn all, like it's just kind of like a turnoff, right? Like it just generally has always been like very like masculine terms, um, which is probably why I've been always drawn to it, but to be honest. Um, <laughs> but I think that if you really break it down, you're okay, what, what is leadership? Leadership is communication and building relationships. That's what it is, um, which it doesn't matter who you are, what industry you are, what type of person you are, personality you have, everybody can improve with those two things. Um, so I would just always go back to that and developing your own style really comes back to you as the person. There is no one way to lead. Um, there's not one perfect way to lead and every business is going to look a little bit different um, but if you can build relationships with the people on your team and the clients that you're serving and the communities that you're working within um, and if you can have very clear expectations and have very concise communication with those people you're going to be a great leader so the ins and outs are going to be very different for everybody um, based on what they're doing but those main principles are going to affect every position that you're in and again this person this is the question of going to i'm going to be the owner now but you could be any person within a industry or a business and this will still apply to you yeah yeah absolutely so i hope whoever asked this question is listening um and we really wish you all the best um this was a really great question and um i i think either way it could go it could go either way. Um, and some of the questions I get asked are so tough that I'm like, oh my gosh, I really hope that this is like, this worked out for them. But either way, I think this is going to be good. Um, but yeah, I would, I would go through this, ask, basically answer all of the questions that we asked as kind of prompts, figure out all those ins and outs, especially on the kind of like the day-to-day -day stuff and what you need to do, what would be different about your life. Um, definitely check out, I'll link the two books below and just the company that I mentioned below. Um, but yeah, Extreme Ownership, I think everybody in the world should be reading that book. I think it's just a really good book, no matter who you are, um, to develop more leadership skills within yourself. It was a huge, just life changer for me. Um, and it's been cool for the people who have told me that they've read it like how they've implemented it. It's just cool because it's across so many different places. And I'm like, oh, that's so awesome. Um, so I think everybody can benefit from leadership um, and just kind of, you know, developing their own authentic voice in their own leadership realm. So thank you again, whoever asked this question. If you guys do have any questions for us, um, we do love answering these. Um, so I will have that link below. Again, this is completely anonymous. So feel free to include as much information as you'd like. Um, and for all other inquiries, you can visit teamlocofit.com. You can apply for coaching, check out the articles that we've written, um, apply for our newsletter and listen to the podcast too. So all of that's on there and we will talk to you guys next week. Bye.